Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Cryptids and Monsters video. Alright, let's go ahead and let's start a whole new series here based on your suggestions. I'm going to go ahead and do some of these, probably around a little bit more than five or so. I'll see how long it plays afterward. Thank you so much again for your new suggestions. I was able to look at them uh, just the other day. By the way, um, a lot of these that are being suggested both now and in the past, I've already done some of them before. So when you have a chance, I do have the um, search option there on my web channel here you can type it in and there's a good chance that you'll see it already created so that's definitely some good news for those of you requesting a specific cryptid out there so this one has to do with a cryptid where there's not much information associated with it in terms of at least nowadays but there is some history in terms of the past and it has to do with yet another shell creature of some kind and in this case it's something that's native there to Iceland it has a really really strange name I mean I can't in, I don't even know if I can pronounce it correctly but it's uh, the way it's spelled it said Skeljaski or Skeljask Creamsley something like that um, you'll see that the title I mean basically how it's how it's how it looks like but for all intents and purposes it's also known as the shell monster so I'm just gonna go ahead and describe it as that here so let's go ahead let's talk about all the interesting but limited information known about this shell monster so what is it exactly well it's a cryptid that seems to be have been around for a long time in fact the first known sighting you would have to go towards almost the mid 17th, uh, 18th century to be exact, somewhere around 1787. So definitely a creature that has been around for a good number of centuries. And it's found there again in Iceland, various parts of Iceland in fact. In fact, you're looking at a portion here that showcases the reported sightings of this creature. Those of you that live in that area, uh, especially on the beaches of Iceland, you'll have a good chance, apparently, of running into this creature. First off, its characteristics, how it looks like, it is very unique looking. Then there's a reason why it's basically called a shell monster. By far, its most distinct feature is most of the body consists of shells. Maybe it's like an armor of some kind, or maybe it's just something that it grows as a mating habit whatever is the case it definitely covers most of its body for all intents and purposes they're shells almost like um, um, aardvark type shells that con that convert the upper part of its body stretching all the way to its legs except for the bottom part those are just simply just left as is the rest of its body seems to be covered with some kind of fur no doubt because of the cold conditions there associated in Iceland it has this long snout or larger than usual snout on the front of its face otherwise it looks more like an aardvark in terms of its face but another key thing about its features are its feet and when you look at its feet it has these long claws those claws they instantly made me think of a sloth you know how those sloths they have those very distinct set of, of appendages of uh, feet and, and hands, if you will, that allow it to just hang on to basically any surface. Very, very cute animals. If you've ever seen them on a video, you know what I'm talking about. But they purposely use those long claws to grab onto anything and to hold onto them indefinitely. Such is the case with the shell monster. It basically does the same thing, except that instead of using those claws for, let's say, hanging off of branches, because it lives in the sea primarily, it uses those claws to hang onto rocks. So whether it's, let's say, on the top of let's uh, the water, hanging onto some rocks there as it travels about, or it could be at the bottom of the sea where apparently when things get so stormy that the bottom of the sea is even impacted it uses those magnificent claws to just hold on to it as it waits out the storm but yes the only other thing that stands out about this shell monster is its size don't let those pictures fool you it absolutely is larger than usual it's about the size of a hippo in fact that is huge uh, those of you that have seen hippo videos know exactly what I'm talking about a full-size hippo is pretty big so imagine something like this wading through those waters there in Iceland and you'll get an idea of how easily 
people uh, can can see this and it instantly makes an impression upon them. Speaking of which, as far as those sightings, um, so there's apparently a bunch of sightings that occurred back in the 18th and 19th century. And in fact, the first one was apparently there in 1787, if I'm not mistaken. It was done, uh, there was a man who, 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 was, who went by the name of Gisley. He reported about another man, and this is a long name, a guy by the name of Branson, brother John Branson, the just the I don't know you know how to say that name, Y Z T A V A E, however that's pronounced. Well, that person encountered this thing and was able to recite it to this guy named Gisley. So the way he uh, stated it, it's a little hard to read, but as he was walking by the sea, he saw this quote-unquote monster there somewhere up on the shore and the way he described it was it was so large that it was almost as large as a horse and of course the biggest thing that stood out were the legs the, the same thing I was mentioning earlier the ones that look like they have like the features of a sloth that's what also stood out to this man and it's kind of hard to interpret what happened afterward but it seems like they were able to then follow this, the trail that those legs made because no doubt with the shore being as is let's say imagine some sand there and then these legs the way that they trail or the way that they made these imprints it was not too hard for this guy to follow it and either he created a trap for it or he uh, to capture it or he made a trap to ensure that it did not go anywhere else but apparently it worked and he was able to then use it to I guess go about somewhere in that town but that's where things got lost afterward. I couldn't really decipher what was stated after that case because a lot of this was translated from whatever the um, the uh, native language is there in Iceland, and it doesn't really translate too well to English. But that's the gist of it that I saw there. Um, as far as any other encounters, uh, there's one more that stands out. I ran into uh, this um, information here. You would have to go towards 1987 to be specific. There were two guys that were out there in Iceland hunting and they were hunting for a creature called the grouse and when they did so they saw a pair not one but two of these shell monsters swimming by the lake that they had uh, uh, set up as a hunting base and then they saw these things whatever they were not just swimming in the lake but then they came across on shore and then they just decided to rest there almost as if they were either bathing in the sun or just resting in between uh, just a, a swimming passage so whatever was the case these hunters didn't do much like they didn't shoot at these shell monsters they didn't do anything else they just simply watched them for a while and then these shell monsters disappeared but that was yet another encounter probably the most recent one the only recent one really uh, with regards to this this thing about another one that only stands out was somewhere in the 20th century there was an English trawler who apparently caught one of these creatures uh, how he caught it who knows where it was caught who knows all of that remains a mystery to this point but he was able to capture it, but the crew that was on his ship was so terrified of this thing, no doubt because of its giant size, that snout, of course, that has what looks like a giant teeth on there too, and then of course those claws, which no doubt can be used as a huge defensive weapon. So they wanted to get rid of it, and they were able to do so. So no, no actual live creature was then taken somewhere else. Instead, it was just just momentarily captured, and then that was it. It, it was either released or it escaped on its own but nobody else was able to capture it afterward but that's it that's basically all the info tied to the shell monster again a creature native there to Iceland anybody from that area by any chance anybody happen to have known more tales more stories more information associated with this very very unique creature please post those comments below that would be really good to hear especially if there's any more current encounters because again a lot of this stuff seems to have happened back in the 18th maybe 19th century but very very few stuff now in the 20th century so all right everybody thanks Ken as always take care